How has London changed due to urbanisation? In this video I'm going to discuss how the old Docklands area of London has been transformed into the financial district of Canary Wharf as well as the cultural centre that is Shoreditch. So welcome back to another video in the London case study series. Again, be sure to check out the link above and check out any of those other videos that have gone through the urbanisation processes of London. Now in this video, I'm going to start by looking at the different businesses and jobs that are available throughout the city. We're going to start by looking at Canary Wharf, which is one of the main financial districts in the UK. It has been transformed into this banking powerhouse from the previous Docklands that welcomed huge volumes of goods and materials. From the 1800s, the area was one of the busiest Docklands in the world. It could handle massive volumes of a variety of different goods and raw materials. Industries such as sugar refineries, flour mills and timber yards all developed in the area to process the resources that were entering London. From the 1960s, the port industry started to decline with the full closure of the docks in 1980. Following the closure, the British government wanted to stimulate and encourage the redevelopment of the area. They did this by creating the London Docklands Development Corporation and designated the area as an urban enterprise zone. Construction began in 1988 with the first buildings completed in 1991, but the project did struggle to be successful from the outset. There are a number of factors that led to the redevelopment battling for success with a dip in the economy and competition from the already established business district of the City of London providing resistance. Canary Wharf contains around 16 million square feet of office and retail space, with almost half of that being owned by the Canary Wharf Group, which is an international consortium with investors from around the world. Over 100,000 people work in Canary Wharf and it contains world or European headquarters of the major banks and media organisations. Barclays, Citigroup and HSBC are just some of the organisations that have established themselves in the area. The European Banking Authority and the European Medicines Agency also had major offices in Canary Wharf but relocated in 2018 due to Brexit. Moving on to London's transport network. Now this network is essential to keep up with the growing population and demand for transport across the city. With an increasing population comes more problems with transport and congestion. Public transport is crucial in London to keep the city moving. Investments in the bus and underground network have been ongoing as well as encouraging bike use within the city. The most recent development has been Crossrail. This is a large scale project to make faster connections from the east to the west of the city. This will enable to bring an estimated 1.5 million more people within a 45 minute journey of the centre of London and would hopefully encourage greater access to jobs. Moving on to Shoreditch, which is located within the borough of Hackney in London. Shoreditch is a perfect example of an area that has undergone changes throughout the years to adapt to the economy and different cultural transitions. In the early 90s, Shoreditch was associated with crime, derelict buildings and high rates of poverty. The once busy textile and furniture manufacturing factories began to decline and so did employment. Around 1996, Shoreditch started to attract fashionable and creative industries. Lower rents and less competition for space made it attractive for smaller businesses to move into the area. The former industrial buildings were then transformed into flats and offices and as employment rates increased, the bars, restaurants and art galleries soon followed. From around 2008, Silicon Roundabout became a hub for technology startups. Due to lower rents and closures of other businesses, it made it attractive and affordable for these small tech companies and entrepreneurs. It then received local and national government support to help create a vibrant tech hub. Companies such as Facebook, Google, Intel and Microsoft have all invested in businesses in the area. 
So that is just a quick summary of how the landscape of London has changed through urbanisation. Again, thanks for watching. Give this video a like if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel for more in the urbanisation playlist.